Hi friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library where today we'll be doing a book haul. Do you remember last month when I said Going forward, my book hauls won't be this large, so there won't be dedicated book haul videos and they'll just be part of the TBR takedown. Apparently, that was a lie. I picked up 14 more books in February, though to be fair, not as bad as the over 30, over 40, however many there were in January. Not that bad, but I got quite a few, so let's go to it. Merlin's here. Just say hi to your friends. Say hi friends. Merlin's here. No? Okay. She says no. She doesn't want to be our friend. Okay. Let's start with book box books. Books books book box boxes. Book box books. Okay, that that? Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. Book box books. Books from book boxes. It shouldn't take that much brain power to figure that sentence out, but it really did not want to come out. First we have Her Buried Lives by Caitlin Duncan. Caitlin is a fellow author tuber and I will link her channel in the description box down below. I read this previously but I had not picked up a copy yet and Unplugged was doing a special edition with this fancy new cover gorgeous sprayed edges and let me tell you well first let me show you the actual book itself it is shiny gorgeous it's the same picture on both the front and the back and then you will never be able to see that it's there though and then oh this way is right side up I can't tell because I can't see it in the viewfinder because it's too shiny. Uh, but the reversible dust jacket is terrifying and it looks like this. Um, no thank you. <laughs> it's I love it. The artwork is great and it is very scary. Um, but that's a big note for me. I'll be keeping uh, this dust jacket regular side out okay I've read this one so hopefully I can tell you what it's about Ooh. this book follows our main character Jenny who has these weird visions that are like intrusive like the very beginning of the story is like her riding in a car with her mom and she has these visions of like them being in this massive traffic accident and like everything you know going horribly wrong and she has that all the time just like normal things and then suddenly like things you would see in Final Destination movies like she sees that stuff happening in her regular daily life she doesn't know why she's like that she just knows that she is her mother inherits the her childhood home and they go to this hometown where she had her mom hasn't been for many many years um, her parents are dead and she has no siblings left alive and so they go to this house and they're going to clean it up and sell it and while they're there a local girl goes missing and because they're the strangers from out of town and because there were weird things happening in the past people think that maybe her mom and her have something to do with it and so she has to kind of like figure out what's actually going on in the present day while also trying to figure out what's actually happening with her visions and what's not happening with her visions i will say one thing that i really loved about this book was I struggle with a unreliable narrator but for me it was really easy to tell by the way that Kaylin was describing things what was and wasn't a vision so they definitely added to the story but I could tell what was and wasn't a vision if you get what I'm saying so because I sometimes have problems with unreliable narrators but I didn't find Jenny to be an issue in this book. Next book box. I believe this was the Illumicrate box for December, maybe? Uh, Illumicrate is months behind in the US. Okay, I was interrupted. Where was I? I know we were talking about God Killer. Uh, as I was saying, Illumicrate is super behind on their US orders, so I think this was the December box. 
I was just getting the book only box. I think I've canceled it, but girl, I don't even know. So she's got sprayed edges, which make more sense this way, but it's harder to film this way. And this pretty cover that's got shiny and it has a gorgeous hardcover cover. And the end pages, y'all, are fan freaking tastic and lovely. So I hadn't heard of this before uh, it came in the book box. Uh, so I honestly don't really know what it's about, which no one is surprised. Um, I assume, let's see, Kissin's family were killed by zealots of a fire god. Now she makes a living killing gods and enjoys it. Good for her. That is until she finds a god she cannot kill. Skeddy? Like spaghetti? I'm going to call him Skeedy because otherwise I'm going to call him Spaghetti and that's not going to be good. A god of white lies has somehow bound himself to a young noble and they are both on the run from unknown assassins. Joined by a disillusioned knight on a secret quest, they must travel to the ruined city of Blenradin. Blenradin, okay. Where the last of the wild gods reside to each beg a favor. Pursued by demons and in the midst of Bur I can't say burgeoning. It hurts me to read it. I can say it, but I can't say it while I'm reading it. The word is burgeoning. Uh, in the midst of burgeoning civil war, they will all face a reckoning. Something is rotting at the heart of the kingdom and only they can be the ones to stop it. So I don't know why there's a, a deer on the front, but there's like a stag on the front and that's, that's all I got. So the last book box fish of the month was book of the month which I got three books from because I have a problem. Uh, I think this month's choice was The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. This was an early release. So The Writing Retreat is an interesting one because I am a writer and I go on writing retreats with my friends. So this book is about a girl who is going on a writing retreat. She was invited by this really uh, reclusive and strange horror writer. And they, it includes uh, someone who used to be one of her friends, but is now a rival. And when they get there, they find out that there is like a writing competition. They're there for a month. And whoever writes the best book by the end of that month is going to win like a six figure um, publishing contract or something to that effect. And essentially they're like snowed in, someone goes missing, is it a murder? What's gonna happen? I don't know, is it a, and then there were none situation? Could be, I don't know. Also, I think I read the word that maybe the place is haunted. So need to read that clearly. I also picked up 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard because Julie and Amber have told me that they really enjoy Katherine Ryan Howard. However, they told me they didn't enjoy this book quite so much, but I did pick it up anyway because it was there and I had credits. This book follows a couple that gets together during the pandemic. That is a problem for some people, that it's a panini book. Um, not a problem for me, but for some people, close quarters during the panini. So they start dating and then the panini happens and then they decide to move in together and they are, you're getting two perspectives while also a third perspective while also getting um, something that happened in the past while something that happened in the future while also getting the 56 days. So, you know, it's like day one, day two, day 20, day 43, day 56. What's happening? And we find out that someone is dead right at the beginning. And so as the book progresses, we figure out who's dead, why they're dead, how they're dead, who deaded them. So that. And then Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney, which is a, and then there were none retelling. And this follows Daisy Darker, who has a family consisting of herself, her two sisters, her niece, her parents, and her grandmother. And they're all getting together for grandma's 80th birthday party at her seaside house that is inaccessible during high tide. They all get to the house to celebrate grandma's birthday. Somebody dies. Nobody can go anywhere because they're all trapped in the house on the island. And then it doesn't end and there were none and people start dying and they're trying to figure out who's killing people and how are they doing it and what is happening and why are we all dying? 
and ta-da! Book club books should be next, yeah? I picked up Almond by a South Korean author. I am not going to pronounce their name at this current moment in time. When I read the book I will tell you their name and I will actually look up how to pronounce it. Um, this book follows a boy who was born with a brain condition that makes it hard for him to feel emotions like fear and anger. His mother and his grandmother have taught him um, coping mechanisms of how to kind of behave like a human. They leave him notes around the house and on, you know, in his bags, on his clothing, whatever, uh, to help him try to act like a human. There is something tragic that happens and he ends up, I think, going to a new school where he meets the school bully. But then him and the bully kind of form a friendship and then something else happens. This was picked for my local bookstore's book club for March. So I'll be reading this and then at the end of the month having a discussion in person with my in-person book club and having a good time hopefully. For Beautifully Bookish Bethany's Patreon book club last month we read That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon uh, by Kimberly Lemming and I loved it so I bought it and I also bought the second book which is That Time I Got Drunk and Yeeted a Love Potion at a Werewolf. That Time I Got Drunk and Yeeted a Love Potion at a Werewolf. I was correct. I got all of the words in there. Uh, these are books one and two in the Mead Mishap series and they are set in a world where the people worship a goddess who has separated them from the monsters, the demons if you will, and sometimes the demons get in and the first book is our main character, Sin, saving a demon and then um, possibly maybe falling in love with him a little bit. Um, these are very short, uh, very spicy, don't have a whole lot of plot. It's all vibes, y'all. Uh, it's very much all humor and if you don't like the humor of it, you're probably not going to like the book, but I had a fantastic time. I then have three romance novels, two of which I've read, one of which I have not, and all three of them I believe were arcs that I had. One I'm very behind on. Uh, not Your Exes Hexes by April Asher. This is the second book to Not the Witch You Wed. This is the Supernatural single series. It follows a trio of sisters who are triplets and they're navigating the supernatural world as single women. I believe in their late 20s, early 30s, and I do believe that at least the oldest two of the triplets are plus size. I can't remember if the third sister is or not. Because I can't tell you the plot of this book because it'll ruin the plot of the first book. The first book follows our main character who is the oldest of the triplets which technically means that she's supposed to be the next Prima which is the head of the witch's coven and she has no powers. So instead of her being the Prima, her middle sister is then given the position of Prima. Well not the position of, she's training to take the position of when their grandmother dies. Um, and she is going to be married off into like some kind of a marriage of convenience which she doesn't want so she gets together with her ex-best friend who is her lifetime enemy who is a shapeshifter and the leader of the North American shapeshifter pack and they fake date but they hate each other. Uh, it's a thing okay it's romance it's got all the romance tropes just read it you'll like it okay. Uh, Make a Wish by Helena Hunting. This is the third book in the, what is this series called? You tell me. We will both know. It is the Spark House Trilogy? Spark Sisters Trilogy. It's three sisters. Again, um, they operate this event space where they have events. Uh, the first book follows the oldest sister who is in a car accident and ends up breaking her leg and has like bedridden and her best friend has to take care of her and then maybe he's not her best friend anymore because maybe there's something more. Um, all three books have different tropes. They're fantastic. Read them. Then I have Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. This is the fourth book in the Well Met series. They all take place at the Renaissance Festival. There's different romance tropes. They're spicy. Just read them. Okay. Now what's next? Next we have uh, some Darcy Coates. We have The Twisted Dead, which is the third book in the Gravekeeper series. I thought this was a trilogy from the end of this book. I was very wrong. This book follows our main character, her name is Kira, and at the beginning of the first book she is running. She has no idea who she is 
other than that her name is Kira and she has no idea why she's running other than there are people chasing her and she doesn't know who they are or why they're chasing her. She hides um, at this priest's house. He hides her from these people um, and is able to, um, once they are, they no longer fear that these people are chasing her in that moment, um, they realize that she can see ghosts and she's able to help ghosts pass on. And so the priest gives her a place to stay and gives her the opportunity to help um, the ghosts of his people, the, his church people peoples after they've died. And basically she gets together with a couple of people from town and they're like trying to solve these mysteries of dead people, but also what happened to Kira? Who is she? Why does she have no memories? who is she running from? All of that. Three books of, of crazy, all of that, plus a little hint of a romance, plus found family aspect, which you know I love. And there's a cat. Also Darcy Coates, The Carol Haunt. This is a standalone. It's a haunted house. It's very reminiscent of Rose Red, if you have watched the miniseries, uh, which I love. And it's Remy, who is a tour guide for a house. A uh, rich guy comes in and is like, hey, will you do a week-long tour in this house with me and some people who I have coming in, some mediums, whatever. She says, sure. They go to do the thing and then shit starts happening and people start dying and things happen. It's very spooky. Darcy Coates is like A++ creepy haunted house stories. And the final book is Delicious Monsters by Lizelle Sanberry. Uh, this was a new release that came out on the 28th which I pre-ordered and had an arc of and read and posted my review vlog that was up on Tuesday on the 28th so if you want to know more about this book and how I felt about it you can go watch that but essentially this book takes place in a dual timeline we have Daisy in 10 years in the past and Brittany in present day Daisy could see ghosts and she and her mother moved to this mansion that her mom inherited that is supposedly haunted. Brittany's mother at some point had went to that house and said it changed her life. Brittany's doing some kind of like a YouTube documentary thing on the house and all of the people that have gone missing there or have died there and she's trying to figure out what happened to Daisy 10 years in the past and so we're getting the two timelines concurrently, figuring out what happened in the past and what's happening in present day. And it was fantastic. And it made me cry, which is weird for a scary book, but it did. This is my very unbalanced stack of 14 books. Like, I'm surprised they haven't fallen over yet. Surprisingly, out of those 14 books, I've only not read four of them. So, I mean, honestly, I'm feeling pretty good about that myself. Uh, it's a lot of books. I read most of them last month. So when I get to this month's wrap up, which should be up next Tuesday, you'll hear me talk about all of those books again. If you made it this far in the video, make sure you leave an emoji, any emoji, your favorite emoji in the, the comment section down below. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.